Welcome to Monterey's Cooking, John Pistol coming to you from the Commercial Wharf in Monterey, California. Man, is that a sea lion or what? That is a big guy. That guy's got to go well over a thousand pounds. Folks, today we're down in Fisherman on uh, Commercial Wharf and um, I thought I'd do something a little different. I'm going to do a Caribbean style uh, fish chowder. Okay, so first thing we need is fish. So whenever I need fresh fish, I come down to see my buddies at Monterey Fish. This is where all the wholesalers come to the hotels and the restaurants. And I talk to my buddy Sal and we get whatever is the best. Okay, we should be using grouper, but you know, this is, uh, this is in January. Uh, we're gonna see what, whatever is fresh, we need a good white fish. And we're gonna get some clams and maybe some mussels. And uh, well, let's go talk to Sal. Let's see what he's got, okay. Ah, there's my buddy Sal. Hey, John. Hi, Sally. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Folks, Sal Tregali, family's been in this business for years and years and years. Been, in fact, even our neighbors. Uh, Sal, how you doing? Very good, good, John. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Hey, always a pleasure, man. Hey, no problem. Anytime. Sal, I want to do sort of like a Caribbean Chapino, okay? I know I had some, uh, I had it over there when I was in Jamaica. Uh-huh. And what they used there was a grouper. So I need something like a, like a real nice, firm, white fish. Okay. I got a snapper, John, that's fresh, beautiful. I think it'll Incredible. be perfect for... It, uh, and maybe a little clams and maybe some mussels. No problem. And maybe maybe some shrimp would might be nice in there. Okay. okay. You came to the right place. Okay. We got it. Okay, folks. Now, they're open to the public. It's, you know, I mean, there's not even a sign out there. This is one of those insider, you know, if you want fresh fish, it's a good place to come. And you know, we have other fish markets too. Right. Royals down oh, the street, yeah. uh -huh. Sea Harvest, they're doing a nice job. But these are my guys. <laughs> okay, All right, let's go see what he's got in the in the uh, in the big refrigerator. All right. Okay, Sal. All right, John. Boy, when I want fresh fish, folks, this is where I come. Uh, this, this is the snapper I was telling you about, oh, John. Yeah. Look at it. It's yeah. alive. Jesus. This just came in this morning. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Look at the, the beautiful color. Sal, this is local. Yes. Yeah. This is all nice local. Beautiful. Beautiful. Local snapper look at, fillet. Look at the color on that. Yeah, this is this cooks up nice and firm. It's fairly inexpensive. Yeah, huh? yeah. That means good price. Uh, great, great eating fish. Okay, and it has a lot of flavor, John. A lot of flavor. Local fish has okay. a lot of flavor. Let's get some of this. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's, that's it. That's enough. Yeah. All right. Now we need some shellfish. We need a little bit of shellfish. I need some oil, uh, clams, and we need some mussels. Okay. You got these? These will work perfect. Okay. Okay. No Fresh problem. clams. Yeah. Maybe we can eat a few raw. And then I need a few mussels, Sal. All right, anything you want. Okay. These are opened. Now, these are the uh, green lip or emerald mussels that are coming from New Zealand. New Zealand, right. right. Okay. We fly them in and... Uh, these are great. These cook up so plump and yeah, juicy. A lot of flavor yep. too. A lot of flavor. These are very nice. Now, these mussels have a tendency to open like this, okay? That only means that they're gasping for air. They're, I mean, they'll close right up again if you just keep doing this. Okay? Has yeah, these are live. The clams and the mussels are alive. Has nothing to do with quality. We've been using these for years. Okay? And Sal, I think if we get a few shrimp, yeah. I think we're in business. You got them. We have them. That's it. Maybe we can invite you to lunch. Me, I'll be, are you kidding? <laughs> okay, let's go get some shrimp and All we're right. out of here. Hey John, here's the prawns. Oh, good. Perfect. You got, uh, you're ready to go. Sal, when we cook this, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna invite you up the house. I'll be there in a flash. Okay. We're going home and we're gonna cook. We're hungry. My mouth's watering right now, John, just thinking about it. See you at the house. Well, I hope you enjoyed that walk down the wharf as much as I did. Always love going down there. Okay, we're gonna make a chowder, or maybe we can call this a chipino, huh? <laughs> well, you know, I spend a little time in Fiji, and some time in Thailand, and some time in um, Jamaica, and you know, the, this, this kind of, I don't know, this give me a little inspiration. So we got some exotic ingredients here, but you can buy, find it anywhere, okay? Now you know we got all the fish, we got the nice shellfish, we got the shrimp, we got mussels, and we got the nice rockfish. Now let's go through this stuff here. This is lemongrass, okay? It's available anywhere. These are sweet potatoes. This is green curry, all right? Hot. 
green onions, fresh corn. Now, the stock is something different. Now, this is called a tamarind soup base. This recipe is gonna call for tamarind. Now, you can go buy the tamarind pods and go through all that stuff, but believe me, in Thailand and, in, and even in Fiji, everybody uses this, all right? It's a base, it has a beautiful lemon flavor to it, available all over the place. These are kefir lime. This is from a lime tree, and boy, what a smell. Ah, just incredible. Then we're gonna use regular onions, and some shall and some uh, these are leeks. Make sure you clean them. Okay. Now to put this together, we got to use a neutral oil first of all. And we're going to make this like we would a chipino. Okay. First, we're going to sauté the onion. Pretty easy. We'll put the potato in. And don't forget the chili. Everything over there is hot, hot, hot. Okay, now, this is how I put this in. All right. And then we put this in. Don't want to use it all. And then, believe it or not, they have a lot of shallots there. So we're going to put shallots and we're going to put garlic. Okay, now this is all gotta cook down. It's gotta cook down to maybe a quarter of this. All right, this is gonna take a few minutes. Okay, here we go, folks. Now let's make our stock, okay? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the curry. All right. Now I add two tablespoons. And then we can always add more if we want. Mmm. Now see, these potatoes are just about done. And this is going to go pretty quick. I'll put a little bit more. You know what's nice about this type of food is you get, you get such contrast. Sweet, sour, hot. Okay, we got that. Now I'm going to add... Here is that uh, that stock. Whoop. Okay, let's bring that to a boil. All right. I'm gonna let that cook just a little bit. Now, let's put the kefir lime, a lot of kefir lime. I'd, I'd like it. Okay, that. And we're gonna put uh, the corn. Here's a fast way to do corn. Okay, just like that, like that, like that. Boy, you know what I'm dying to make for you too? Is the nice corn chowder. I've got a cookbook that a friend of ours, Joy, gave us. And uh, it's from 1923. It's called the White House Cookbook. And uh, boy, does it have some interesting recipes like corn chowder. Very, very, I mean, quite similar to what we would do. You know, our basics, I mean, uh, salt pork, a lot of salt pork, and uh, stuff like that. Then we're going to pull some recipes from there and try them. Look very interesting. Okay, now we're going to let this come up to a boil, which won't take long. Now, we're going to put the things that take the longest first. Okay, now I've cleaned all the mussels. you got to pull the beard off. you got to pull them down. And it won't hurt to smell these guys, you know. Watch out you don't get your nose cut. Uh, and if they smell bad, they should smell just like the ocean, nice and clean and sweet. I mean, if they smell a little bit bad, throw them away. Don't even take a chance. Okay, so these are gonna, this is gonna be the one first. Now we're gonna add the coconut milk as soon as this comes to a boil though. Then I'm gonna taste it with a clean spoon that I'm gonna get out that's never been touched before by human hands. That's for the lady that wrote in and told me to keep my fingers out of the pot. You know what, you're absolutely correct, and from now on, I will keep my fingers out of the pot. And here you see my big stack of spoons, where I will use my spoons from now on. Now, what happens if I sneeze in here? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Let's test this. Okay. Wow, that's got some flavor. 
It's got hot. It's got a real lemony. Mm, whose favorite dish is this? Who likes this? Ronnie loves it. Bobby V loves this one. Sherry loves it too. And uh, and Patrick's gonna love this one too. Patrick, this is your kind of food, brother. I mean, doesn't that look good? Okay, as soon as this comes up to a boil, where's my coconut milk? Okay, here's coconut milk. Make sure you don't get the dessert coconut milk because otherwise it'll be too sweet. Put two cans. Ah, look at that, folks. Ah, doesn't that look good? Gee. Mmm. Look at that. Look at that. Really. Look at that. Okay, make sure your pot's hot, big enough to put all this stuff in here. Okay, let's give this a few minutes and we'll be right back. When we come back, we're going to continue. We're going to put this dish together for you. So stay tuned, please. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go clams over here. Clams there. Boy, what a feast this is. Woo! And we got to call Sal down at uh, Tringali's because he said he wanted to taste this. So just, uh, who didn't smell this one? This one's got a little bit of the feather. Okay, that one goes now. This goes here. See how I'm doing this, folks? Let's get it right in there, right in there, just like that. Okay. Now, the fish, I'm going to leave it in these pieces because they're going to break when we pull them out. So, they'll be fine. Okay, how's that look so far? All right. Okay, we got everything in there. There, oh, everything but the shrimp. Okay, the shrimp I'm gonna put, we're gonna wait two minutes and then we'll put the shrimp on. Now this has gotta come to a boil, a good strong boil because you gotta open those clams. You know, we're doing our new segment for 04 and it's called Ask the Chef. Now, those of you that are from our area or know our website, we um, have a newspaper column called Ask the Chef. And we get uh, people uh, calling us in and writing us in from literally all over, the, all over the United States. So we decided now at the, the last part of the show, I'm gonna answer people's questions. And if we have time, I'll cook their request for them also. And they'll be appearing on our website. So if you wanted to see the recipe, um, it'll be on the website, okay? So that's coming coming on towards the end of the show. But stick with this. We're not finished with this yet. This is very good. You will like this. Okay. Yeah, see, as soon as this starts cooking. Oh, boy, look at that. We don't want to put the shrimp in yet. Shrimp's gonna just going to be barely warm, folks. Just barely warm. Boy, this smells like the islands. Okay. This needs about another 10 minutes, okay? So let's give this good 10 minutes. Okay, look at this, folks. That is done. Now, I'm gonna put the shrimp in and just let the shrimp hit that water. We don't want this to cook. I mean, this will, see, we don't want everything to break up on us. Okay, you see how that's gonna do that? All right, this will take one minute. And this will be ready. And then we're going to finish this off. Now, it's okay to use the green onion tops. That's going to give nice flavor. And if you wanted to float a couple of these, that's pretty hot. Let's not do that because that's already pretty hot. Okay. Now, I would serve this with the white rice or a coconut rice. I wouldn't because it's, it's got a lot of coconut flavor in there already. All right. 
Okay, see, just when these guys turn red, they're done. I mean, that's it. See how fast that cooks? Never overcook shrimp. They get real bub uh, rubbery. You see what I'm doing? Okay, now to serve this, let me show you. See what I said about the fish? Let's serve half of that. Let's serve some of the nice mussels. Like that. Let's see if we can find those. Get some more muscle. Woo! But, you know, this is the soup. Okay, here's the, let's see if I can find those crabs. Okay, here's the clams. Nice and opened. So we got everything. Clams, mussels, fish, shrimp. Give, make sure you get a lot of that nice juice. Nice chunk of fish. That look okay, guys? Looks all right to me. Okay, let's turn that off. Now. And there you have it. A Caribbean Chapino or a Caribbean chowder. Just for you. I hope you like this one. When we come back, I'm going to do the Ask the Chef segment, and we're going to do a hot roast beef sandwich, a French dip, in fact. Okay? So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make one, a real one. And I'll tell you the story how it was named. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back, folks. Um, this is Ask the Chef segment. Here's a nice letter from um, William and Sheila Foy, Foy, F-O-Y, my wife and I are forced to drive to San Jose to Harry's Hoff Bra to get a good, medium-rare, pink roast beef sandwich on a French roll with a good, natural au jus dip. I have ordered it in many places in Monterey, and all I get is this brown, dried-up slices on a roll. Is there any place that serves a good French dip sandwich? William and Sheila Foy. Yes, that's an easy, easy one in my house. I'm going to do one for you. This is a fantastic one. But you know what? You can make it yourself at home. Buy yourself a nice cross rib or a rump roast. And if you have a slicer, it makes it real easy, okay? Um, the other thing, it has to be fresh. You, 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 the meat, when it's, when it's old and they, they slice it, it's just not good, folks. I mean, you, you really want to do a fantastic thing, do what we did. This is real easy, okay? I cooked this real rare. Then I got some beef, uh, beef stock in a can and loaded it with garlic and onions. I mean, loaded it up. And then any juice that was left over from the pan roasting, I put it in here, too and season it with a lot of pepper, okay? Now, it's real simple to make. Let me show you. These are some of the things that has to be done. Now, notice the bread. See, it's crusted, but look how soft that, that bread is soft. You see this? This bread is gonna just kind of melt in your mouth, but it's gotta be strong enough to hold the beef. Now, we do not wanna cook the beef. This is hot. See, it's got the onions already in it. What they're doing when they do this sandwich is they cook it, they, they, they leave it in the hot, water, hot juice too much. Look, you see what I did? Boom. Okay, let's, do, let's give you a real one. Huh? I mean, let's, let's talk about a real, real one. See, this is still nice and rare. Okay, now, you know, I did a little research. This sandwich was invented in New York by a Frenchman that had a little restaurant. And he was serving roast beef sandwiches. And as he was serving them one day, the meat dropped in the pan where the, the roast beef was and the bread fell in there too. And he served it anyway. And the guy goes, it's okay. Well, the next day, the guy came back with about four of his friends. And because the man that owned the little deli was a Frenchman, it became called the French dip sandwich. That one you can believe. Okay, now, this is a very important part. You gotta dip this part too. You gotta dip that. All right? Now, when you cut the sandwich, that's what it's gotta look like. That is what, that's a rare, real rare roast beef sandwich, French dip. Now, here we go. You see this? 
That's ambrosia. And I'm not talking Gary either. This is the real stuff. So there you have it, folks. Ask the chef. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this one uh, to the foys. This is how you do it. Okay, so there you have it, folks. A real French dip sandwich, an honest to God French dip sandwich with the story and a beautiful, look at this chipino, we're calling this a, a chowder today, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next time. Mm -hmm.